Well, hey there, buckaroos. Josh Cripps here with Professional Photography Tips. You know what I love? Shooting in the RAW format. But do you ever look at your RAW files and say, man, I wish I could process this a couple of times. Once for the foreground, once for the sky, once for the sky again, just to shake things up a little bit and get the best part for each section. Well, guess what? Now you can. So why on earth would we ever want to process a raw file twice? The reason for that is uh, because a lot of times when you're shooting, you end up with an image that might have uh, a lot of different localized tonal areas within the image. So for example, this image right here, even though you can see it's got a good looking histogram, it goes all the way from near black all the way up here to near white. Um, within the image, there are quite a few spots that are sort of locally uh, similar tonally. Uh, for example, these mud cracks here all kind of have the same tones and this darker bit here, this muddy stuff kind of has the same tones. Then there's this light patch of sky stuff here and again with the dark clouds in the sky. So the problem when you have a bunch of different tonal areas like that within an image is uh, say for example you wanted to increase the contrast of this image, which I like to do. It's probably my favorite processing technique is simply contrast uh, increasing to get the details to kind of pop out and the way I like to do that is just with the parametric uh, or with the, uh, the tonal curve here so you'll see normally the the standard way to do um, contrast adjustments in, in with like a curves or something like that is to drag up your highlights a little bit and drag down your shadows a little bit to create what's called the classic S curve now you can see that really bummed up the contrast of the image, but it also did some things I don't really like. It made these darker bits of the mud and the mountains really close to uh, black, perilously close to black. It made these highlight areas maybe a little bit too bright, and it made these clouds too dark. Now say for example I was targeting the contrast of these mud tiles, and I really want to bring out the contrast there, I might keep bringing the highlights up and the shadows down. Now, that's maybe a little extreme, but I really like the contrast that's pumping out here in the foreground. But now you can see I've just blocked all of my uh, shadows here nearly to black. My highlights are white. My clouds are nearly black. So if I open the image like this and start processing it, it's going to look like crap. So one of the things we can do now is process a raw file a couple of times to isolate each of those individual tonal areas and then combine them in Photoshop for a better master file. So let's get to that. Uh, the first step is basically uh, what we just did is figuring out a contrast level that works sort of for each individual spot on the photo. Uh, now there are other ways you can do this that uh, don't involve uh, double raw processing. For example, you can use localized adjustments with your adjustment brushes. Um, personally, I feel that double raw processing gives me a little more uh, control, a little more accurate results. I'm sure other people will disagree with me, but they can go make their own tutorials. So here we go. Uh, what I'm basically going to do, like I said, is isolate the tones that I like for the cracks. I'm going to do a different one for this area, a different one for the sky, a different one for these guys, and then we'll combine it all in the end. So now that I've got these tones where I like it, I'll go ahead and open that as an object into Photoshop. Uh, and now that it's open, what I want to do, you see I open it as a smart object. What I can do, if I right click on here, I can hit this new smart object via copy and that will create a new smart object which I can then double click and send back into the raw converter. Ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Hey oh, there it is. So now if I go back to my curve over here, I can make a new adjustment. Say I want to look at the tones here in the mud. So obviously they're a bit too dark. So if I bring that up and I play with the contrast a little bit like that, now you can see maybe the for cracks in my foreground are getting a little too bright, but I do kind of like how I've added that extra brightness in to this midground stuff and especially the mountains behind. It actually looks pretty good for those clouds too. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and that will pop it back into Photoshop. Now the cool thing about making that uh, object via copy or smart object via copy is that it preserves the underlying one. So now I have one layer with my good contrast from my cracks and a layer on top of it with good contrast levels for my midground and my clouds. Now you can see I've blown out my sky a little bit and here it's a little blown out too. So I'm going to go ahead and make another smart object via copy which I'm going to send back into the raw converter. 
back to my tone curve and let me pull down the highlights a little bit. Now I can really make those bright bits pop out by dropping the shadows, dropping the mid-tones a little bit and pulling up the highlights some more and something like that. Okay, so let me bring that guy back out into Photoshop. So I have these three individual layers which all contain nice looking tones for these individual parts of my photo so really all I have to do now is blend them uh, together and to do that I'm just going to go ahead and create a series of uh, layer masks and I'm going to start with this layer here which is my I'm going to rename these this one's going to be called cracks this one's going to be called midground in clouds because mm, we like it that way midground and clouds and this top guy is going to be bright sky so now we know what we're working with all right let me turn that guy off so the first thing I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that layer and bring it down here and add a layer mask now the simplest way that I like to do this to, to make the blend a nice smooth transition is simply with the gradient tool so I'm going to hit G which will bring up my gradient tool and I want to make sure that I'm using a linear gradient up here that fades from my foreground color to my background color and personally I always like to blend from the area that I'm keeping to the area that I'm uh, masking out so that means a white to black gradient now I'm making sure that I'm on my layer mask itself so this is the area that I want to keep here which is the good tones and this is the area where I want to blend in that underlying layer with the nice contrast for the crack so if I drag a gradient across like that all of a sudden it's revealed my crack layer underneath alright cool so if I if I turn this off this layer that I've just been working with here's our original layer that we produced with the cracks in it now if I turn the visibility of our midground and clouds layer back on you can see that boom all of a sudden we have all this great detail in our midground and our clouds as well the one thing that we've got a problem with now is our blown out highlights so again what we're gonna do is simply turn on the visibility of this bright sky layer which you can see has really nice tonal values for that bright sky I'm gonna add a layer mask now this time uh, what I want to do is start with a black layer mask now there's a couple ways you can do that you can just hit add layer mask and then hit control I which will invert your layer mask or if you don't want to do it that way another quick uh, trick is to hold alt or option while you're adding a layer mask and it'll automatically bring it up black so now this means that that entire bright sky layer is invisible which is what we want because I basically only want to paint in that bright sky layer where the underlying layer is uh, too bright so I'm gonna go ahead and move to my brush tool and I always do this kind of stuff with a low opacity soft brush so right now uh, I'm on a 30 percent opacity brush and I want to make sure that my softness is all the way down or my hardness is at zero and then just using this big soft brush I'm going to lightly brush in this bright layer and you can see what's happening here is it's bringing in all the details from that sky layer maybe bring it down a little bit so I can paint in some of these more because I'm using that soft brush at a low opacity the transition is very gradual and so you can see if I turn off that bright sky layer that's what we had originally and I turn it back on that's what we've got now so we've left ourselves with a an image that is more even tonally throughout the entire image um, and now we can go ahead and make further adjustments to it if we want to um, but that's not really necessary I just want to show you guys ultimately the the difference of what you can do when you do something like this so if I hit uh, control shift alt e or command option shift E what it does is it stamps all of those layers into a master composite layer which I've got now here on the top and please ignore all my little dust spots up there this is not a dust spot removal tutorial so now we've got this layer here on the top and I want to show you guys how that compares to if we had just produced uh, a single raw conversion so I bring this back into Photoshop and let's try to get something that looks good as sort of a global adjustment so if I just do that standard S curve something like that I'll bring this back out and 
So this is our master layer up here. I'm going to rename that um, triple processed RZAW, or I mean raw. There we go. So this is our triple processed raw. And this, if I turn this visibility off here, you're going to see what a singly processed raw file looks like. See, it doesn't have the nice, uh, smooth tones throughout the entire image. It's, uh, it, it's losing a lot of detail down here in the darks and in the highlights. It doesn't have that nice contrast we produced here in the cracks as well as these clouds up here in the sky. So now we've got an image that's way easier to deal with and we can add uh, curves adjustments on top of that. We can do sharpening or we can do dodging and burning to bring it all out just how we like it. So that's it. That's uh, pretty simple. That's all there is to double processing a raw. That's all it means. And you can get as crazy with that as you like. You can triple process like we did here, quadruple, quintuple, whatever you want to do. And go to town with those layer masks to produce these beautiful, even master composite files, which are then a lot easier to process on the back end. So if you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. You can also join my newsletter for helpful photo tips and assignments you can do to improve your own photography. Now go check out some of my other cool Photoshop videos. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.